Hey guys, and welcome to the Alchemist Code Beginner's Guide. So in this guide, I'll be going over to what you want to be doing in your first few days to weeks of playing the Alchemist Code. So to start off with, you will do the tutorial. And once you do the tutorial, you will be placed in the main town quest hub. In the town quest hub, there are a number of useful menus and places. And I'll quickly go over them before heading into what you should start off with in the Alchemist Code. So the main ones are, you've got your news, where Gumi posts the new news, such as new banners or new events coming up, your gifts, where Gumi sends you gifts, your milestones, which is your quest log, your bundles, which lets you purchase gems, the premium currency, and if you haven't completed them yet, you will have a challenge uh, icon here as well. Then there's your friends list, the shops, if you press shops, this is where you can convert your ingots such as your gold and silver ingots into zenny which is the gold currency for this game the secret shop the coin exchange shop and the soul exchange shop the secret shop as a beginner there will be a beginner's secret shop as well as all the other secret shops most of the normal secret shops we get them as soon as gumi releases a new banner or a new event and lets us buy certain items or shards related to the event but the beginner secret shop is only available to you for one week exactly from the time that you create your account and there are a few items in here you want to purchase every day, such as the 5, 10 summon equipment tickets, as well as the skip tickets if you have the money. There's also 10 sets of 20 forbidden apples, but those do not reset every day, and you only need to buy them by the end of the week before they disappear. Apart from that, the coin exchange shop is where coins that you can earn in the multiplayer, which is the multiplayer section, as well as the arena can be used. The multiplayer coins, you mainly want to use on either gear shards, or to be the most efficient, you can use them on forbidden apples. As for arena shards, uh, that's really up to personal preference. Personally, I would use them on unit shards, though, specifically the arena unique unit. You, uh, not really sure how to pronounce it. Juan? Ugh. And then the soul exchange shop is where you go to sell excess soul shards for units. In the alchemist code, duplicate units do not actually give you a duplicate of the unit. Instead, they are transferred into soul shards. Once you have used the maximum number of soul shards and maximum limit broken in a unit, which I'll go over in a second, you can sell excess soul shards. You can convert them into soul coins, which you can then use to convert into five-star unit shards or other items. I would always just go for five-star unit shards once you start to earn these, as those are the best items to get. Now then, those are the menus, and there's also three buttons down here that are pretty important. The quest button is where you can go to the events, the story, or multiplayer. The battle button is PvP, and the summon button is where you summon your units. So, when you first start the game, uh, you have the option to reroll. Now, the game does not give you the option. You would have to know how to do this, and I do have a video on that if you want to watch that. But rerolling in the Alchemist Code basically means deleting your account and starting from scratch. It takes about seven to eight minutes to do it once you have the time down, and it is a somewhat painful process as you do have to go through the unskippable tutorial all over again. However, there are certain units in the Alchemist Code, and there are three in particular that make the game much easier if you summon them. I guess four. So these four units are five-star units. The best one by far is Shayna, who has the Holy Brawler skill, which makes her incredibly powerful, and that's her job one. Then, after Shayna, you've got Ryle, who has Ranger job as his job one, which is a very powerful ranged job. After Ryle, it would probably be Shenmei, who has the Pirate job as her job one, which is a pretty powerful job. And Shenmei currently has a banner going, so this is Shenmei right here. And then after those, uh, if you get a Magnus, Job 1 Magnus is powerful enough to carry you through the story, but Job 2 Magnus is powerful enough to carry you through pretty much anything, as Machinist is a very powerful job. So if you want to reroll and you reroll for one of those characters, your time going through the story, as well as through your first few events, will be much easier than players that start off and get unlucky in the rolls. I might get good units such as Elizabeth, but good units that are more supporting units than carry type units. So on to the units themselves. So in the Alchemist Code, you pull your units from the gacha, and then you strengthen them by pulling duplicate units. And when you pull a duplicate unit, you get shards for that unit. 
So we go to my Yomi here. I don't have any shards left, but you can see I have pulled enough Yomis to get her to the second full limit break out of five. At five stars, when you get a unit to five stars, they will be have a maximum of 25 limit breaks for a total of five of these limit break stars, and that is when they are max limit broken. Uh, on a unit that cannot get to five stars, so let's quickly go to one of those. One of those terrible units. Is Arkill a terrible unit? I can't even remember. He is. You can see he can only get to four stars, which means at the most his limit break will be four of these. Now the only benefit to this is that these units, you will be able to start earning soul coins for them much more quickly due to how it works. You will be able, because they are considered maximum broken at only four or even three full stars, you can get the soul coins for them much, uh, much faster than you can for units such as Yomi or Ryle, who require the full five limit breaks. Now, limit breaking is very important, as limit breaking increases the max level of the unit. The max level for a five-star unit without any limit breaks is 60, and each limit break, up to the total of 25, increases the max level by 1, up to a total of 85. Now, the other thing limit breaks do is the first and third limit breaks unlock the second and third jobs, the second and fifth limit breaks unlock the second and third gear slots, and the fourth limit break unlocks the master ability for a unit that has a master ability available. So gear is slightly different from equipment in that gear you pull from the gear gacha and is equipable on any unit. Equipment is more of a level up aid in that it gives them stats. So you can see I get a number of stats from this. These are this unit's stats. Uh, here's a better one. This is a pretty good item. You can see it increases magical attack by quite a bit, which is what this unit relies on. Uh, in fact, it's more than quite a bit. It's That's a 5% increase. And you don't lose these stats when you press, uh, when you job level up, because when you job level up, all the items, you, all six items uh, that are equipped go away, and you get a new set of six items to equip. But the stats you've gained from the six items that just went away are retained in the stats, and then you can get the new stats from the next six items. Gear, however, is swappable between characters, unlike equipment, which disappears once it's used. And you get equipment, uh, you can farm it from story mode, you can get it from a gacha, you can buy it from the shops. There's plenty of ways to get equipment. Gear is much rarer to get, and you mostly have to rely on the gear gacha to get equipment in the game. So, you've started the game, you may or may not have rerolled. What do you do now? Well, first you want to focus on getting your player level up, because your unit's level cannot exceed your player level. What this means is if you're level 10, your Shayna, despite having 5 stars and having a max level of 60 before any limit breaks, can only get to level 10 at the, until you level up again. Once you get level 11, she can get level 11, and so on and so forth. So leveling up your units as fast as possible, especially because a lot of the equipment pieces to job level up your units have uh, minimum, level, minimum level requirements, is a must. You want to get to about level 55, 60 as fast as possible, which means beating the entirety of chapter one of the story. And the reason we do the story is because the milestones, so the quests for the story, give a large amount of experience. Doing these will give you a lot of experience and let you level your account level up much quicker, which in turn lets you level up your units much faster. Now, apart from that, there are a few things you want to do while you're taking care of this. You want to make sure that any summons that are disappearing soon, uh, you want to summon those first using your gems before you summon anything else because once the summon disappears, you do not get a chance to summon it again. And the first time you do a brand new banner summon, it's only 500 gems instead of 2,500, which is the normal price for a 10 times summon. This means you're only paying 20% of the price for this, which for free-to-play players who only get about 70 to 80 gems a day that you do to dailies, is huge, as we only get about 500 gems a week. So getting one new banner a week means we can do a full free pull on a banner every week. And getting these unit shards is incredibly useful because this lets you have increased chance of getting powerful five stars, as well as let you get more of the shards for three stars and four stars such as Almira, Venekis, Karis, Regan, uh, Lofia, Rahu, 
and Zangetsu, powerful three and four star units that can make up the core of your team. Now, apart from doing your dailies, which are pretty important because dailies are your main source of gems, you also want to take care of events that are ending soon. So you want to take care of the summons ending soon and the events ending soon while making sure to do your dailies. Now, a lot of players will look at the dailies and be kind of afraid when it comes to the clear hard quests, but doing the chapter one, episode one hard quests are pretty easy, and I think you can do them at like level 15 or 20, which you can get on. Uh, after your first day of playing really quickly. So doing the events that disappear quickly uh, or the events that are disappearing sooner is the best idea as soon as you have the team level required to do them because events give large amounts of gems and other materials that are very useful in upgrading your account and making your team stronger. Apart from that, you also want to look at Arena. Now Arena as a new player is a little special. Arena gives you about 1 to 20 gems based on your ranking, depending on how much you have played. Um, however, this is all depending on your ranking, and you get paid daily. And there's one other way to earn gems in Arena, and that's your highest ever rank. My highest ever rank is about 1900. I haven't played Arena much in the last week because I'm kind of lazy, and I don't want to have to scope out good teams to beat. But every time you get a higher new rank, you get five gems. And what that means is as a new player, instead of trying to zoom down to the ranks, about top 5,000, top 10,000, you get 10 to 20 gems every day. If you just beat a few players within a few ranks of your own, so if you see I'm 6415 and I can fight someone at 6375, 6385, I can fight quite a, the top rank will always be within about 50 to 100 ranks of your own. So just keep fighting those guys, keep getting those five gems, do that up to five times a day, and you can get tons of gems every day for, just for doing this. I believe there's a maximum of 20, but that's still pretty good, especially as a new player. And this way you don't need to worry about your team not being strong enough to compete in the arena with all these whales or all these people that have been playing the game for months now. You can just slowly increase the power of your account, increase the power of your team, while gaining your daily arena gems. Now, apart from doing this, the other thing you want to make sure of, and don't forget your secret shop, your beginner shop, you want to take care, care of that other, every day, is farming hard mode for unit shards. So there's two ways to get unit shards in this game. One is the gacha, and the other is hard mode quests. So if you go to story and you go to hard, uh, let's go to chapter one here. Episode one, you can see there are units here. This one's Logi, the protagonist. And if I investigate it, you can see that the reward is a Logi shard. And you can do every single hard mode quest three times a day. And for Logi, he's actually got another mission on episode three, act one. You can see I've got Logi again. And I want to say episode five, act one as well. No, nope, just episode three. Never mind. So you can farm like six Logi shards a day, which is actually a pretty decent amount. And doing this will allow you to maximum limit break your Logi and make him one of your most powerful team members. And especially because Logi is going to be very powerful down the line in our version, he's going to get quite a few decent job upgrades, which will make him a very powerful unit. So investing in Logi is not a bad idea. And especially as if you're a free-to-play player, Logi will be one of your best units just because of how good a unit he is just in general, even before the buffs. So you can see I've got Logi here, as I've changed back to the Chapter 1... Uh, loading screen, and this is what you'll probably see for most of your first few weeks of playing the Alchemist Code. So, what are your long-term goals in Alchemist Code? Your short-term goals are to just accumulate uh, gems, get your player account level up, and start building your team. But you also need to have the long-term goals. And the long-term goals are job mastering your main team, which means fully leveling up each of their jobs. So if I go to my Ryle here, you can easily see that. Just wait for this to load. Oh, that's Retzius. No one cares about him. Here we go. You can see my Royal has job mastered both of these jobs, his Ranger and his Twin Blade job. And job mastering gives you your top three stats for that unit. Each get a small percentage boost that not only applies to this job, but applies to every other job that you use. So by mastering my Twin Blade job, my Ranger job is now more powerful than someone that's only mastered their Ranger job. 
it's not a huge boost, but it is a small boost, and it does help. And especially once you have more resources than powerful units you actually want to level up, doing this is definitely advisable for your absolute top tier units. I wouldn't do this to just any unit though, especially because these resources are pretty hard to come by, and they're pretty expensive to upgrade. But job mastering your units definitely will make your team stronger, and it should be one of your primary goals for your main team to have them all at least their pro main job at job mastery. Maximum limit breaking is also a goal, but that's a little more difficult to do if, as if you're not using a full team of free units, you are kind of reliant on the gacha, and unless you're a whale, this could take you a while. Now, there is hope. Japan has hard mode quests for 5 and 4 star units, as well as 3 star units, I believe. Which means that if you get a Yomi or a Ryo, um, or other units, especially units like Yomi, who need job 3 to be amazing, then you don't need to worry. Eventually, you will be able to farm their shards, even if only 3 a day, and you will be able to maximum limit break them if you put the time in. And the other thing you want to start focusing on is developing elemental teams. A lot of events that Gumi likes to put out have a focus on using a team of a certain element to counter the elements and allow you to defeat the mission. If you try to use a team of mixed element or a team that just doesn't have any elemental advantages, then the numbers have been fudged so that you will not be able to beat that mission unless your team vastly outranks the enemy team or you're using a bunch of super overpowered units, such as Shayna for right now. And apart from that, you also want to focus on being able to do the events and get as many of the gem milestones as possible so that you can do more free pulls. Now, if you're a whale, you don't really need to worry about that, but you'll be able to do it anyways because you're powerful enough to do the events. But if you're a free-to-play player, trying to build a team that's powerful enough to do, take care of these events is very important for your gem income as a free-to-play player. And of course, reaching level 85 should be one of your other long-term goals, as level 85 will allow you to make your units max level, because once you're level 85, your units can be level 85. Of course, just because you're level 85 does not mean you will be able to make your units level 85, as the amount of resources it costs to make a unit level 85 is staggering, both in terms of shards and in terms of apples, as apples are the main way to give your units experience. And I can just quickly show you that here. So if you go to your units, there's a number of small things on the bottom right. The job is where you level up the job. The ability is where you level up their abilities. So your unit has an ability set up, and you can switch in various abilities here. So only one ability is fixed, and that's the main ability for the job. So for ninja, it's ninjutsu. But I can switch out basic ninjutsu with basic shamanism from her shrine maiden job, return curse with poison fog, and ninja stealth and mind up have no switches because both ninja and shrine maiden only have one passive skill each. But this allows you to really mix and match, and this is what makes certain units more powerful than other units, just by having different job types. Yomi's pretty good because she gets holy brawler at job 3, which combined with ninja, which has ninja stealth, makes her a very powerful unit. But other units that have ninja won't be anywhere near as good. For example, Yomi's three jobs are Shrine Mated, Ninja, and Holy Brawler. Now if I click over here, here we are, to Raida, you can see that Raida's jobs are Shrine Maiden, Ninja, and Sage. Two or three jobs are the same, but Ninja, or not Ninja, Raida is a B-ranked hero on Chillis, while Yomi is an S rank hero. And that's all because Holy Brawler is an amazing job, and Ninja is an amazing supportive job for that job. Sage is a pretty good job, and Ninja is a pretty good supporting job, but together they're not that amazing, and Shrine Maiden does not add anything Raida needs. It doesn't add anything for, it, do, eh. it doesn't add anything for Yomi either, but Yomi's Holy Brawler Ninja combination is so powerful that she's S ranked anyways. So, back to the apples. Apples are how you level up your units for the most part, as leveling up through the experience gained from stages would take for freaking ever. So, a small tip that most players don't know, if you click and hold the apples, you'll just keep using them. Which is an easy way to use a large amount of apples all at once to get to the next few levels. So, in conclusion, 
as a beginner in the Alchemist Code, really what you want to be focusing on is just getting a strong team to start off with. I would advise rerolling. A lot of people say that you don't need to reroll in the Alchemist Code. It's not bullshit, but starting off with a Shayna or a Ryle or even just a Job 1 Magnus will make your life so much easier than if you start off with a bunch of random whatever three stars and your protagonist as your best unit. So you don't need to reroll, but it's definitely advisable if you want a smooth tie, a smooth path forward in the Alchemist Code. Uh, take advantage of the beginner secret shop every day for your first week. Make sure, at the very minimum, get the equipment tickets. Those equipment tickets are huge. You get five of them every day. That's 50 pieces of equipment as a beginner player for only 50,000 zenny. To get zenny, just go to shops. If you press on shops and you have any ingots in your inventory, it'll ask if you want to convert them. Just say yes. There's absolutely no reason to save them. Then just try and power your way through the story and prioritize your gem spending on banners that are expiring soon. As well as if you try get close to maxing AP, try to do as many events as you can, but don't worry too much about it. Just power through the story until your units, your play level's high enough to get your units to a level where you can start participating in events and burning your energy in the events instead of having to burn it in uh, the beginner story stages as farming those stages is very inefficient in terms of AP to items gained. Then, as you level up your team, make sure you're doing your dailies for the gems and slowly start to diversify your teams, build, start looking at elemental teams or elemental units to cover the weaknesses of your main team, and continue to build your main team up. Your core team of three to four units will serve you well. You don't need to raise DS, um, raise him enough so that he doesn't die in the story mode, but DS is a fairly bad unit, whereas Logi is a fairly good unit. Then just slowly work on job mastering your units, max limit breaking your units, and doing the pulls every week. At the very least, the 500 summon for free-to-play players is always worth it to get more units and unit shards. Anyways guys, that's the beginner guide for Alchemist Code. I hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you like it, and have a good one.